third or fourth year of doing this. We've picked all bar one of our teams. We are getting to the LGFA team of the year. Ashling O'Reilly, how are things? Hey Owen, how are you? Very well. So you've had the least amount of time to actually mull over this. So I'm um, sure <laughs> there'll be a lot of forgiveness out there if anything goes wrong. But I think you've got things spot on. Will we get straight into it? You've, you've picked your, your football team of the year. Um, your goalkeeper, Ashling, who have you gone for? Yes, so number one, I went for Kira Trent for Dublin. She's just been a stalwart for Dublin over the last number of years. She's very vocal from the back, a great leader, really steadies the ship, and she's always reliable, very consistent. So a very important person in that Dublin team that sometimes mightn't get the credit that she deserves. Do we know how many different kick-out routines that they have? Because spot, you'd spot her put up, put up the hand saying five, and that would be the name of a, a kick-out routine. Mm -hmm. That's something that she seems to have taken to a whole new level over the past couple of seasons. Yeah, she's really evolving the goalkeeper role in ladies football, I feel. And I think other teams are then developing on that. So mm -hmm. I think that's why I picked her today, because really for what she's done for the game. Um, and I'm sure with the background team and goalkeeper coaches and whatever that's working with her has really pushed her on. But the talent she has is, is just immense. All right. So Kira Trant is the goalkeeper. Who have you gone for a cornerback, first of all? Cornerback, I went for Melissa Duggan for Cork. Um, the way I describe Melissa is a terrier, just very nippy. I love to see a cornerback getting up and down the pitch, getting the scores, and that's what she did this year. You need serious fitness for a role like that, and um, I think she has that and more, and she had a super All-Ireland final, just a brilliant player to watch. Fullback then? Fullback, I went for Neve Collins for Dublin. Uh, rock solid in the full back line for Dublin. She sometimes can go unnoticed as well. I suppose in a team like Dublin, when you have the big names, you know, she mightn't get all that credit, but she's been brilliant for them over the last number of years. Um, coming from the, the Grey Fox Rock Camantili Club, and we've seen her make crucial interceptions time and time again. So she's well deserved in that full back position. Do Dublin, how much credit did Dublin deserve for keeping the Cork score to such a, a low point? On, on Sunday afternoon because I, I was kind of making the point that maybe Cork will regret this as the winter rages on that they didn't manage to put up a much better scoreline because Dublin were there for, for, the, for the taking but maybe actually mm -hmm. the credit deserves to go with the Dublin defence Yeah, like in the second half Cork scored two points and one of them was a free so really the Dublin defence deserve a lot of credit it was quite defensive like on both mm. sides you know, I would have liked to see Cork maybe play a bit more um, on the front foot but um, you know, I think they might look back on that and, and look at things differently. But a uh, big thing to note there is the experience that the Dubs have. Like they have did four in a row now, so they're well used to that All-Ireland final day. And Cork, as much as they've been there the last while, some of these girls are, are only making their debuts this year. And, mm. you know, they're, they're a team to watch out for, for sure. The other cornerback then is uh, another Cork one. Yeah, this is Eric O'Shea. So... A flyer. She made her debut for Cork Seniors this year and she's only 18 years of age. Such a talent, like against Galway in the semi-final. And so that was the first time she played in Crow Park. And watching her then in the All-Ireland final, I did wonder, would this occasion affect her? Um, but she was just immense. You should have seen her tearing up and down the line, breaking through tackles, just no fear. And so what a debut of a year she's had. Someone that we'll definitely hear a lot of over the next year, like 18, it's just madness. <laughs> yeah, it's great. And the age profile of the team in general like, does give hope that Cork can actually get back and challenge this Dublin team. Uh, we've had all Cork and all Dublin so far, but we're changing things up at number five, Ashling. Yeah, um, this is someone that I just really sh shone to me in this championship this year. So it's Blaheen Mackin for Armagh. So the way I describe Blaheen is like a Brian Fenton, like she glides around the pitch just effortlessly. She's... She's been solid in the half-back line for Armagh this year. She's a great reader of the game. And I think we've seen this year as well, she's well able to get up and down the field, to get on the scoreboard and something nice as well. She links up well with um, her sister, Amy, you know, to get that long pass into her. And I'd say that's something now they've been practicing over a number of years because you can see it just works out well for them. So, yeah, Lonnie Mack at number five. She's a super player. And then it's two dubs beside her in the half-back line. Yes, I have. Siobhan McGrath couldn't couldn't look by her. Um, it was very tough to pick this half-back line, but I, you couldn't look by Siobhan. She's been rock solid for Dublin. She has that experience to guide the girls. You know, she's super strong in the tackle. She breaks out with the ball. She lays it off, but then she holds her position. And I think she keeps the girls in check, in a sense, um, in that back line, like letting them know like to pull back or pick up a player. You know, she's a very big influence 
on that Dublin team. So Siobhan McGrath is your centre-back. Who's the other wing-back then? Yeah, then number seven, I went for Goldie, Sinead McGoldrick. Um, the fitness, the pace, it, I think with Sinead, it, it's what strikes me most is her ability just to get up and down the pitch and she's always making that um, important tackle. Like a lot of the time it's it's a hand or a leg or, or even herself. She throws her whole self in front of it, yeah. whatever, whatever it takes to, to make that block. So yeah, she got player the, the game in the final. She's seven All-Stars, we can see why. And um, yeah, just always consistent and a great role model for ladies football. Yeah, brilliant in the final. So the team so far, just to recap, is Kira Trant in goals, a full back line of Melissa Duggan, Neve Collins and Erica O'Shea. And then you've got Siobhan McGrath and Sinead Goldrick alongside Blaheen Mackin in the half back line. And then we move on to the midfield. So who have you gone for here? Yeah, it's, it's an all Dublin affair. It was tough again to pick this, but I just think with the impact that this midfield made in the third quarter in the All-Ireland final was what really did it for me and how they work together. So number eight was Lauren McGee, just a work a workhorse like the legs. She just nonstop up and down the pitch. Great knowledge of the game. She's always looking up for the player in the best position. And she's really grown over the last few years since making her debut in 2016. I actually I spoke with her um, about a month ago and she was she told me about losing her stepdad this year and how tough that was on her and how the whole team rallied around her and I was just delighted for her to actually get the win, get the All Ireland win after what's been an extremely tough year for her. Um, and then I went for number nine was Jennifer Dunn. Jennifer's only twenty years of age. She works tirelessly and she's been so consistent this year because Owen Carey, um, she was a huge loss at the start of the year, but Jennifer just stepped up and look at the year she's had. You know, I was delighted for her and she really made her presence known in the All-Ireland final. Um, she actually received the pass to set up Carla Rowe, who was through on goal. And um, Carla was then pulled down and that resulted in the penalty. And that's what got the Dubs back in the game. So she had a massive influence in that final. Right. So it's an all-Dublin midfield and... A couple of Dublin players as well in the half forward line, needless to say. So who's your number ten? Yeah, Noel Healy, um, just just epic. One of the longest serving Dublin players um at this point. She made her debut, I think it was two thousand and seven. She's pace to burn, so enjoyable to watch. Um what I love about Noel, she takes on her player and it's just it's a rare Dublin game when you don't see Noel getting on the scoreboard a leader in the team um, and I think as well this year especially she's a doctor so she's been working on the front line so to have the year that she's had in football and then to also be juggling work as, as a doctor in a pandemic is just amazing. And then we've got our first tip player at centre forward. Yeah, um, Ashling Maloney. Um, first word that comes to mind when I think of Ashling Maloney is a wizard. She just scores this these points and you're like how the hell did she do that? Like she turns her body in such a way that you're like, what? I just don't even know how she got her leg like that. Mm. So she's just brilliant to watch, just extremely talented. Um, up there for me in the best in the country. You know, we've seen her play Camogie this year as well, and she was just as good. And not only does she have like an immense ability and skill, she's also another great reader of the game, times her runs, gets into space, and then has the confidence to, to top it off, takes the scores. We've seen her get 110 against Galway and, and 17 against Monaghan. So just brilliant. So that's Noel Healy and Ashley Maloney, two of your three half forwards. At number 12 then, I guess it's weird that in the in the Camogie final this year, a penalty was decisive. It was pretty important in the football <laughs> final as well. And your number 12 was the one who scored it. Yeah, this was Carla Rowe. Um, she's someone I feel just... I work so hard to get better and better and better again. And, and that's just always the impression I've got with her. I believe probably that that is why she's as good as she is. Um, she's their powerhouse in the forward line for Dublin. Her pace, strength, getting herself in the right position, um, which results in all the scoring that she's done this year. So, yeah, she got that all-important goal um, in the final. And she's a real joy to watch, an exciting player and someone that's going to have a huge future ahead of her. Right, let's get into the full forward line because this is interesting. There's no dubs in your full forward line here. Uh, call us out. We'll start with number 13 here. Who have you gone for? Yeah, no dubs in the full forward line, but I have Anya Sullivan. Couldn't look by Anya. She scored 1-1 in the All-Ireland final. Um, she got the first goal within the, the first minute of the game. Incredible. She buried goal. it. Incredible. Yes, you, you need to check it out if you haven't. You know, it was top left-hand corner. Um, we've seen her score 3-1 against Calvin in their first group game. 
she just had a great season this year, really stepped up in the final when they needed her. Um, she's 26 years of age. We'll be seeing a lot more of her and hearing a lot more of Anya Sullivan. So she's your corner forward. You couldn't not pick her. And no. you couldn't not pick your full forward. No, definitely not. Um, this is up there for player of the year also. Um, so it's Amy Mackin. Uh, geez, Amy just lit up the championship this year. In ways... For me, anyway, she's put ladies football on the map a bit more than it already has been, if, if that makes sense. Um, I just think we need players like Amy in ladies football and to come back from a cruciate injury and to score like 1-6 against Tyrone, I think it was 2-7 against Mayo. It's just incredible. She has the ability just to flip a game on its head and and when her team is down, she, she really lifts them right back up and that's a sign of, of a brilliant player. So over the next few years, I think we're going to see and hear the name Amy Mack and more and more Something that strikes me actually about Amy is that she's never played in Crow Park, which is madness to me. But I've no doubt that, you know, over the next few years, she will get there. Very special player. Yeah, it'll probably help with a few more games in Crow Park as well to, to give that opportunity. 15 mm. then, corner forward from Cork. Who is it? Yes, so corner forward, I again, I, I think Orla Finn is just epic for Cork this year. She's a player that I think doesn't always get the, the credit she deserves. She maybe goes under the radar a small bit. Her free taking is always bright on point. And you know, she finished the year with 120 in four games. And um, she got three points in, in the All Ireland final. So yeah, I think she's just been a, a stalwart for, for Cork over the last number of years. And she's really deserving, I think, of that number 15 position. The question is, where are all the Meath players in this team, Ashley? I know, I know. I, I stuck to the senior, but I, they could have easily slipped in. I think. So people like Vicky Wall, we've seen in the All-Ireland final. She got 1-3. And this is another goal you need to check out if you haven't seen it. She, Her sister, Sarah Wall, got pulled down um, in the back line. She got a bad injury. And it was particularly sad because she would a cruciate injury there the last number of years. And she was only back. And Vicky was clearly upset about it. She was down with her for quite a while till they got her off the pitch. And within the minute of that happening, she responded straight away. Vicky got the ball, ran straight through the Westmead defence. She did a little shimmy to put the defenders one way. She soloed on her left and then on her right, she just like nailed it into the top left-hand corner. So just something else. So she could have easily fit it into that team. Um, then you have like Stacey Grimes from Mead as well. She finished up the year with 418. And then Moira O'Shaughnessy as well. She was their midfield and their captain. Super score yesterday from the Cusick Sand side. And she's just such a leader. So I was delighted for them. But the, yeah, the, they'll be there next year, there or thereabouts. Yeah, you, you did a, a truly professional job on it. You didn't let personal bias get in the way. Let's recap <laughs> your football team of the year. It is Kira Trant in goals, a full back line of Melissa Duggan, Neve Collins, and Erica O'Shea. The half back line then was Blaheen Mackin, Siobhan McGrath, and Sinead Goldrick. In midfield, it was Lauren McGee and Jennifer Dunn. The half forward line was Noel Healy, Ashley Maloney, and Carla Rowe. And then your full forward line was Ani O'Sullivan, Amy Mackin, and Orla Finn, which means you've only got one more piece of business left to get to. It is your player of the year. Who is it? Yes, this was so tough. I found this really tough now. Um, I, I don't know. I think everything was saying to me it was Amy Mackin, but not that because she didn't get to the All Ireland final, you can't figure out. I, I don't think like that, but I. Just think over this year, she really shone to me. She was, it was so close between her and Carla Rowe. But in the end, I gave it to Carla Rowe. I just think she's just someone that's been so consistent for the dubs, a real team player. And I think that's the most important thing about her. She She's always looking out for the team, whether that's making space to, to let a player run through uh, or if she's making space to get on the ball, whatever it is. We've seen her get that pressurised penalty in the final. Dublin were down at that point when she took that penalty. Serious pressure. She got them right back in the game. She finished the day with 1-3. Um, she scored 3-10 for Dublin this year. I believe she is their powerhouse um, in the Dublin team. I personally love to watch her. Great role model. So, yeah, she is my player of the year. Yeah, and you can stick a penalty like that under the greatest of pressure as well. You probably deserve to, to eke out the competition. So, Carla Rowe is your footballer of the year. Fair play, Ashling. Happy Christmas to you. Thanks, Millian, for that. Brilliant, Owen. Thank you. Happy Christmas.